Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're going to look at the taxi, takeoff and landing procedure. Today will involve the front cockpit which you can get to by pressing 1 on the keyboard and the rear cockpit with 2 on the keyboard. Let's start with taxi. First of all we need to find out if we have chocks on the wheels. So press F2 which will give us an exterior view and we can see we do indeed have chocks. We need to remove them in this case. Sometimes they'll be on, sometimes they won't depending on how you started the jet. So we need communications menu which for me is that there. Communications menu. Ground crew, wheel chocks, remove. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Wheel chocks are now removed. Thank you. Next, parking brake can come off, which will probably on from the cold start. Next, can it be closed if it's not already? Left control and C. There's a good chance you may need your canopy open to be able to talk to the ground crew as well to remove the wheel chocks. Next, to taxi is all obvious stuff your axis commands your thrust left and right rudder left and right axis and your wheel brakes left and right off we go advanced throttle there is no speed limit in dcs i'm not sure if there is in real life but we must not go too fast otherwise this jet will tip over in fact why don't i just give you an example of that right now oops butterfingers that is a broken jet let's try again Okay, procedure repeated, off we go. A bit more sensible this time. The heavier your loadout, the easier she will tip over. Approaching runway, tow brakes on. You should really follow the line perfectly, but I'm not because I'm naughty. I've also just been told that USAF recommends max of 30 knots taxi speed. Next, apply the parking brake and release the tow brakes. We've got a quick checklist to do, so first, inlet ramps, left and right, make sure they're both on auto, and they are. Next, ejection seat arms in both seats, make sure they are armed, and the down position is armed. Check the other guy. If you're a Grim Reaper, you will probably need this. Back to the front. Check that flaps are down, they should be from your cold start, and they are. Next, push the takeoff trim button, which is this guy here, and you will hear a tone. Your rake. Your rake. Check the canopy is closed and locked, and it is. According to the procedure, we must now check the IFF, which is currently off, but at this stage of the aircraft, it's not modelled anyway, so that will come later. Next, the CFT switch ensure it's to norm, which it should be, but just check it, and here it is, in norm. Check the radar is on, which it should be from your cold start. Oh, and it's not, that's strange. Well, that's why we have checklists. Next, back to the rear targeting pod. We're not actually carrying one this time, but just in case we were, stand by. Back to the front seat. Next, pitot heat and engine heat, mission and temperature dependent. So, pitot heat on, and in this case, engine heat off. Check for any warnings or indications. No master caution, no alarms. INS knob, make sure we're to nav, and we should have been from our initial alignment, and of course we are. Next, taxi to the runway and hold, so parking brake off, advanced throttle. I'll show my little guy here. You see my controls down in the bottom left. Straighten her up with the nose wheel steering and tow brakes on. Next, we need to not put the parking brake on. Instead, we're going to hold our tow brakes down. We need to check the weight of the aircraft, which presumably you would know, but we're going to cheat by pressing rearming and a refueling window. There may be a different way of doing this, but I don't know it yet, so press that. It will tell us our total weight down the bottom, 50,071 pounds. We are now gonna cross-reference that with this table here. If we assume 50,000 pounds and a mid-center of gravity, this says that we will be rotating with half aft stick at 120 knots. We should get nose will lift off about 136, and the aircraft will take off about 160 knots with this weight. First we'll talk through the takeoff procedure. With tow brakes on we will spool the engines to around 82% and hold. Then when ready release the tow brakes and push to either mill or max power and I'm always going to use max power. Once we reach the pre-calculated rotation speed half aft stick until our aircraft reaches an attitude pitch of 10 degrees on the pitch ladder. 
she will of course take off. When we have positive rates, retract the gear and the flaps. She will be trim high at that point, especially if she's lightweight. So we suggest a couple of clicks down on the trimmer. We will then climb at full or mill power to our cruise of Mark 0.9 and then keep that for cruise. Now that all sounds very easy, but the problem with this jet is it's so powerful, especially when she's lightly loaded, that it all happens so quickly that you can actually cause damage to the aircraft, to the gear and flaps, if you don't get them up quick enough. So essentially, as soon as she's airborne, you need to hammer the G button to get the gear up and hammer the flaps up button to get the flaps up, because she will accelerate to damage speed just within seconds, if using full power. A quick control wipe. And here we go, spool 82%, which you can see on the taco at the top of our engine display. And a release brakes. And full power. Watch the speed climb incredibly rapidly. Look for our target rotation speed of 120 knots, which is, of course, on the left of the HUD, which is going to get real quick. And let's rotate the stick. She'll be up by 160, which she is down. Trim gear up, flaps up, up to 10 degrees. Check indicators, flaps, gear, good. Sexy flyby because we can. And I'll see you at mark 0.9. You join us at the approach point 10 nautical miles off runway 05 left of Cairo International. Our procedure is going to be first, we're going to contact the tower to get the pressure of the runway. We're then going to do our descent checklist, which would usually be done much higher, but we're expediting this video, so we'll do it here. We'll then fly the initial point on the dead side of the runway at 300 knots and 1600 feet AGL. We'll then break over the runway. This will be a left-hand circuit. On the downwind, we'll maintain 250 knots. We'll deploy our gear and our flaps. We'll then do our landing checklist. As we turn into base, we'll transition to on speed, flying at an angle of attack of 20 to 22 units, which we'll do all the way down to landing. We'll flare above the runway. Once we've touched down, we'll try to maintain 12 degrees angle of attack for optimal aero braking, but not exceed due to the risk of tail strike. Once the nose drops, we will tow brake, and that is the end of our landing. So first, let's contact the tower to get our air pressure. Comms menu, as before. ATC, Cairo International's at the top because it's the closest, 10 miles off the nose, inbound. You can see up there, hopefully you can read it, QFB 29.51, I think that's inches mercury. I'm going to exit there, I'm going to go down to my altimeter and I am going to change it to 29.51, boom. We're now reading the correct 3,000 feet AGL. Next, descent checklist. First, master arm to safe, done. Next, CMD off, so I'm gonna jump into the rear seat, and here we go, off. Also in the rear, set targeting pod to standby, not that we've got one, but we'll do it anyway. Ping, back to the front. Terrain following radar as required, and it's already off, so leave it. Check pitot heat and engine switches based on environmental conditions. I'm going to have him on. I'm going to have engine heat off. And set up exterior lights as required. And landing light. Oops. All right, let's go. Unpause. Ping. Visualize the runway to the dead side on the right. Maintain 300 knots. Get down to 1600 feet just to expedite for everyone. Let's just speed her up a bit. Okay, that's our initial point. 300 knots, near enough. Slightly low. I'm gonna break about half distance of the runway. I reckon's about there. By the time we hit downwind, hopefully we'll be about 250 knots. Official procedure says 1.5 nautical miles away from the runway, but I'll probably do it a bit closer. And level on the reciprocal layer. Okay, that's pretty much the right speed, pretty much the right altitude. Gear down. 
flaps down. Let them travel. I'm going to pause there as we do. No, nope, flaps haven't come down yet. Flaps down. Right, we're going to do our next checklist. So, gear down and locked. Check. Flaps down and deployed. Check. Hydraulic gauges. Check. Over here in the green. Anti skid to norm. Already in norm. And check the hold brake is off. And it is. Right. Checklist complete. And unpause. She's going to be very draggy at this point, so we need to up the thrust a little bit. Otherwise, maintain the reciprocal as we extend a few miles. Obviously, you'll be looking over your shoulder a lot at this point, maintaining visual on the runway, as this is a visual landing. Alrighty then, make our base turn. We're going to transition now to our on speed, because at this point, we don't care what our speed is. We care what our angle of attack is. That will compensate for the weight and drag of the aircraft. We can see it here. It's measured in units, not degrees. We want to maintain just over 20, up to 22. And that's all we have to worry about, other than just navigating to the threshold of the runway. So let's try that. Eighteen units, twenty units. Expedite the turn, just coming up fast. Okay, we are now on speed. Although it will be slightly different when we're at wings level, what it is when we're in a turn, for reasons I don't really understand. Okay, intercepting the radial of the runway now at on speed, and that's too bad. Now the uh, flight path marker, this chap here, we're now going to put just beyond the threshold of the runway, modulating our throttle to maintain our 20 to 22 units of angle of attack. Right, let's try that then. Okay, we're now on speed, just 165 knots it looks like. May need to sit up in your seat a little bit. When we're just about to touch down, we'll flare with a bit of aft stick, reducing our descent rate, obviously. We don't want to damage the gear. And I'm going to try and hold the nose up. Low altitude. Low altitude. Certainly is, Betty. Cut for it all. Flare. Look at the watermark on the uh, pitch ladder. Try and keep it at 12. They need a bit of rudder in there. There's uh, a little bit of wind on there by the looks of it. I'd rather be slightly shy on the angle. Okay, nose is dropping now. We've run out of lift. Oof, down we go. And let's start using tow brakes. 70 knots. 60 knots. Okay, that's it. Go and park up and go to the shutdown procedure. 